Yeah, I'm looking for a city break in Paris. Weekend after next. Two nights. Yeah, I'll hold. Paris? And who's the lucky lady? Or haven't you decided yet? Hmm. I'm taking Jenny. What about Sally? Don't think they do romantic breaks for three. When are you going to tell her what's going on? When I'm ready. But you can't just use people and throw them away. Sally and me have run our course. Things change. It's not like I owe her anything. Well, even if she sees it like that, which I doubt, do you really think she's going to be happy carrying on working with you at the factory? Well, there's going to be a few changes on that front as well. Actually, Jenny's coming over tonight, Mum. It might be best for everybody if you weren't here. I see. And where do you expect me to go? Why don't you visit your sister? You haven't seen her for a while. No. I've been too busy. There you go. It's about time you had a break. Yep, I'm still here. Out of bed already? Shall I light the fire brigade? Why are you so happy this morning? Why? Prefer it if I'm miserable? Well, at least you're quiet then. Is that a new outfit? It's called a power suit. Um, it's called spending my inheritance. Yeah, well, I need to look the part. And what part's that? Sally Webster, businesswoman. Oh, I quite like that. It's got a nice ring to it. And you sure all this has got nothing to do with trying to look good for Frank? There's no shame in making yourself attractive for the person you're with. And men like him don't come along every day. There you go. Hey, morning, Carla. Morning, Anna. What can I get you? Um... Bacon balm to go and a coffee, please. Okay, uh, would you like your coffee? Black with a spoon standing up in it. Oh dear. Mm. Oh. So this is where you're hiding out, is it? I'm having me breakfast. I'm not exactly wearing a false beard. Could have woken me before you went. You look like you needed the rest. Plus, I didn't fancy you biting my head off again. Look, I'm sorry about last night mm. and about the meal. I'd had a pig of a day at work, and when you started having to go out, I needed to... Get drunk? Yeah. I needed a drink. I didn't want to do it in front of you, so... Go on, call me weak. Got no willpower. How can I? It's not like I haven't done it myself. Dozens of times. Still owe me dinner, though. I'll see what I can do. Mm. Oh. Oh. So, so this is what passes as justice now in the British legal system, is it? And it's barely a slap on the wrist. Ah, Norris, yes. I thought I saw you in the courtroom yesterday. I didn't realise you cared. I don't care about you. I care about my community and who, who I'm forced to share it with. What, you think they should have thrown away the key, then? I believe the sentence should fit the crime. So what will you have opted for, huh? A stoning? A little, like, branding on the forehead? Don't try to make me out so it's some draconian ogre. I, I think you'll find the man in the street feels exactly the same as I do. Yes, somehow I doubt that. Oh, well, let's put it to the test, shall we? Uh, Jason! Yes, Norris. Can I ask you a question? Well, it depends who that is. This man has been rightly convicted of conning people out of thousands of pounds. Which I voluntarily paid back. And this is his punishment? Just scraping down a few walls in some gaudy tabard. Now, does that look like justice to you? To be honest with you, I don't care. Well, you should. Just ignore him, it's easier. Yeah. And then they wonder why this country's going to the dogs. No, no, I'm still up for it. Half two, then. All right, then, love. See you then. Bye-bye. Going out, are we? That's right. Anywhere nice? Meeting. Alcoholics Anonymous? Ha <laughs> ha. No, it's a business meeting, as in none of yours. Speaking of business and alcoholics, I heard Peter had a bit of trouble at the bookies. Where did you hear that? Word gets out. Ah. Uh, now, you see, I wouldn't be surprised if you were the one put the gambling commission onto him in the first place. Carla, what sort of man do you take me for? Oh, don't worry. I'd never mistake you for one of them. 
Ah, here's one for you. Gentleman, early 70s, fit, non-smoker, would like to meet ladies of a similar age for companionship, long walks in the countryside and quiet nights in by the fire. That just means he's too stingy to take you out of an evening. Oh, you're a hard woman to please, Rita Sullivan. I don't need pleasing. And anyway, why are you trying to set me up with a fella? Because I hate to see you going to waste. Going to waste, am I? Oh, you've been taking tips from Norris how to charm women. <laughs> oh, talk of the devil. Did you manage to wash that pigeon muck off the windows yet? Pigeon muck? Mm. It looked like a pterodactyl had flown over. But yes, for your information, the windows are now spotless. I'll say this for you, you're a man of many talents. And what exactly are yours? Oh, somebody's a bit touchy today. Yes. Well, some of us have been up since five o'clock this morning, working. If you need a hand, you only have to ask. All right. The paper boy rang in sick again this morning, so if you genuinely want something to do, we can deliver that lot. <laughs> you don't have to if you don't want Oh, I've done it before. It's just like riding a bike, except without the bike. <laughs> Oh, hello. Hi, Carla. May I say you're looking very beautiful today? You after a tip? Maybe. Burn the shit up. Hiya. I thought we said half past. Oh, we did. I just wanted to get her in plenty of time. Oh, you are keen, aren't you? I always am when it comes to making money. How about you? Oh, yeah. And I want rid of Frank more than you can imagine, but uh, I'm still not sure, but him buying me out's the answer. Which is why I've drawn up a plan of the contracts I can put your way, give you an idea of the figures I'm talking about. Ladies? Oh, no, I think I'll just stick to coffee, thanks. Oh, come on, I can't drink all this on my own. And I hate to see expensive wine going to waste. Oh, well, in that case, it'd be rude not to. Good, then, why don't you start looking at those and I'll be mother? Thanks. So, um, have you decided what are you going to do about work and looking after Leslie? Good news is, found a new carer. And the bad news? She can't start till next week. So, she's going to have to throw some more sickies. Well, that's not going to go down well, is it, with them already talking about redundancies? I don't have a choice, do I? Anyway, we'll be OK, won't we? Yeah, well, if I could take the time off work, you know I would. That's not your fault. I, I couldn't help overhearing, but, well, if you still needed to take those days off, I could square it with Frank. Really? Oh, I don't know what to say, Sally. Uh, thank you. It's the least I can do. You've had a chance to think about it. What do you reckon? Well, it's definitely an attractive proposition. Which part? Chance to earn a six-figure profit by the end of the year or getting rid of your current business partner? Oh, oh both. Then what are we waiting for? Well, I don't know, really. It just sounds a bit too good to be true. I'm not going to lie to you. It'll be hard work mm -hmm. and there's a risk. But you tell me one thing worth having that wasn't either of those. That is a good point. Well, then, why don't we have one more drink? You can walk across the road and wash your hands of Frank Foster once and for all. What do you say? I'll tell you one day. Carla, <laughs> I'm not trying to strong-arm you, but if you're not interested, let me know. I'll find someone who is. And if you're that interested, you won't mind me waiting 48 hours to make my decision, won't you? We're both on the same side. Right. <laughs> so what's the rush? Let's have that drink. <laughs> Do you know, if I was a betting man, I'd say I'm in for a lecture right about now. You know, I haven't come here to argue, Peter. Oh, I might change the habit of a lifetime. Look, I'm worried about you, but more so about Simon. Oh, and you don't think I am? Well, I didn't say that, but you got so wrapped up in this relationship with Carla that you can't see the effect it's having on him. Yeah, well, 
Thank you for the parental advice there, dear old dad, but you're hardly an expert, are you? And you accuse me of being predictable. What? Look, every time I reach out and try to help you, I hear the same old thing. I was a terrible father. How could I possibly know anything? Well, it's not nice being told you're a failure, is it? No. But it also doesn't mean that what I say isn't worth listening to sometimes. Yeah, well, I'm sick of you and everybody else round here trying to tell me how to run my life and bring up my son. So any problems from now on, I deal with them my way. Oh, what way is that? Through the bottom of a glass? Anyway, I've got a business to run. So why don't you take your soapbox and let me get on with it? Afternoon. Hey. We're shot. No, we're not. Uh, table for one, please. One what? Uh, of course. Take a seat. I'll bring a menu over. I don't know what you're doing still letting that man in here. We've been through this before. He's got every right to be treated like any other customer. Well, if you think I'm going to sit... That's exactly what I think you're going to do. Look, I don't need any more trouble. I've got the review from the Gazette coming in later. Not the one I... Yes. The one you've had a fingernail to. So come on, Mum, hands off. No pun intended. I wonder where you've got to today. Oh, had a few things to take care of. And I've decided to visit your aunt this weekend. Well, that's a good idea, Mum. Do you want to live to the station? No, my train won't be for a while, so I thought I'd catch up on some work in the office. That's if I won't be in the way. Don't be silly. Excuse me a minute. Hello. You can use my desk if you want. I won't be needing it for a while. Thank you, Sally. So what went wrong? Something must have if she didn't agree to the deal. <sighs> OK, look, I can't talk about it now, so meet me at my place in 15 minutes. All right? Excuse me, Mr Foster, could I just have a word? Julie, will you tell Sally that I've got to pop out for a bit? OK, but could I just... Just tell her. Come on, let's take a wiggle on. Where are we going? I told you, we're going for a walk to the Red Wreck. Why? Because it'll be nice, fresh air, you know, blow the cobwebs away, it'll be fun. Don't want to go there. Where do you want to go? Home. Well, you can't stay cooped up at home all day, you'll go mad. Come on, we'll have some fun. Eh? <laughs> ah! 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 You all right? Yes. Sorry, ma'am, didn't mean to upset her. I just saw you over the road now, I was just trying to hear you. It's fine, we're fine, eh? Are you off? Uh, we're going for a walk. How can you not work? I took a few days off work, well, maybe a week. Ma'am, you'll get the sack if you carry on like this. I've sorted it with work, Jase. Maybe now. But what happens next time you got to look after her? What about then? I'll deal with it, and she has got a name, Leslie. Yeah, what's your name? Muggins. Come on, take the notice. It's all right. Come on. Where are we going? Mm. If you need anything else, Anne, I'll be on the factory floor. Thank you, Sally. I think I can manage from here. Hello, Frank Foster's office. No, I'm sorry, he's not here at the moment. Can I take a message? The hotel's fully booked on those dates, but you can arrange an alternative. OK, I'll pass the message on. Thank you. Bye. Do you know anything about Frank booking a weekend for two in Paris? Why would I? It's not as if he tells me everything he's planning. Far from it. Hmm. Maybe he's booked it as a surprise then. Oh, Paris, eh? It's a good job I bought myself some new clothes. I thought we had her. I mean, I would have gone for the deal I outlined, and I know it's a rip-off. You don't think she's sussed you? I'm not stupid. Neither's Carlo. She's just being cautious, weighing up the odds. She'll come round. How can you be so sure? I'm very persuasive. We just have to be patient. It'll be worth it. <sighs> Hope you're right, because I won't be happy until she's in bits. Most of the time, you're one of the gentlest men I've ever been with. But when you talk about her, you change. Sorry, she dragged my name through the mud and half the people around here are thinking I was some kind of monster. Even you believed her for a while. Yeah. 
That was before everyone found out the truth. And before I got to know the real you. Thank God for that, eh? Yeah, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm up here, yeah. I went looking for you in the shop. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't feel too good, you know. Plus, I've only had a couple of punters in all afternoon, so I just thought I'd close up early. How do you feel now? Now, yeah, I'm fine. It's, uh, it's nothing. So, how, how come you back from the factory, then? Well, I had a meeting with Jenny. Yeah? How was that? Well, that's why I wanted to see you. I need some advice. <laughs> sure I'm the right bloke to be... Asking. Well, yeah. You're one of the few people I can trust right now. Thank you. ta -ra. Oh, there you go, then. Ah, oh, you're back. How did you go on? I uh, quite enjoyed myself. I had a nice long walk, and then I stopped off at the Flying Horse for a quick pick-me-up. <laughs> oh, you finally made it back, then. I was half expecting a call from the hospital. Why is that, then, Norris? Oh, I thought the uh, shock to your system of doing a few hours' work might have proved too much for you. How about when I finish here, I treat us both to a bite to eat at the bistro? <laughs> Emphasis being on treat. Take no notice of him. He's just jealous. Nobody ever invites him anywhere. Play your cards right, Norris, and I bet that young lass of yours, Mary, would treat you to a bite in her motor home. For your information, Mary is not my young lass. She's a mere acquaintance. Don't worry, your secret's safe with us. <laughs> you are off. Yeah, but you like me. <laughs> well, my compliments to the chef. That was exemplary. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Come again. Yes. It's not too soon. Hi. Hi. Are you leaving? I was considering one for the road, as I'll probably be cleaning them tomorrow. Yeah, I saw you this morning with Norris. Was he giving you a hard time? Nothing I didn't deserve. Could have been worse. Could have been Peter. I've got a feeling he'd like to do more than just give me a talking to. Look, don't let them get to you. There's only one person around here who gets to me. I thought you were going. Gail, don't need to be so rude. Rude? If I bit my tongue in the artery, to drop off. Well, maybe that isn't such a bad thing under the circumstances. I just don't understand why you're giving him the time of day. Perhaps I should leave now. Yeah, and last something where you're going. Would you just put a sock in it, will you? Come on. Are you taking his part against me? Mum, enough. Oh, so it's two of you now, is it? Two against one. But that's all right. I'm in the right. I can take it. We well, can take it outside. Am I embarrassing no, you? No, no, no. The reviewer from the Gazette's just arrived. Got to admit, if this Jenny's not blowing smoke, then it sounds like a great deal. I know. So, uh, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong is that it's my factory, it's not his. You know, I helped build that place up. I've worked my backside off keeping it going. I nearly died in there and then I built it up again. If I sell out to him, it's just. It's like it's. It's like he's won. Well. Maybe you just need to let it go then, love, eh? Oh, yeah. Will he? What do you mean? I don't know. I... I don't know. I... Maybe I'm just being paranoid. I just feel like he's up to something. I feel like he's not finished with us yet. Hey, listen to me. Frank can't touch you, OK? Because I won't let him. And anyway, there's nothing he can do now, is there, so...? You want to bet? Who do you think ticked off the gambling commission about you? That was Frank. Well, no, he didn't admit it, but by the look on his face, he didn't have to. Where are you going? I'm going to see what Frank's face looks like with my fist shoved in it. Are you serious? You'd be banged up before he even hit the ground. Well, maybe, but it might be worth it. Oh, no, this isn't just about you, Peter. Listen, what about Simon? He needs you. I need you. Come on. Hey, I'm here for you. I'm here for you, baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mm. What? You've been drinking. What 
time's your train. Seven. I'm off for a cab now. Frank's just text. He'll be back soon. I'm sure he'll give you a lift to the station. I'll get a cab. You had a row or something? Um, I don't mean to interfere, but Frank's been under a lot of pressure lately, and I think it'd be really helpful if you just cut him a bit of slack. <laughs> so funny. You! You are a stupid woman. Do you know that? Excuse me. Stupid and deluded. You walk about thinking you know better than anybody else, thinking that you are better than anybody else, sticking your nose into other people's business when you're too blind to see what's going on right underneath your own. How dare you speak to me like that? Truth hurts, doesn't it, Sally? Well, you better get used to that feeling. What's that supposed to mean? You think my son cares for you, that you're somehow special to him. Well, you're not. And the fact is, I don't think you ever were. That's not true. Frank does care about me. He's just booked a weekend for two in Paris. <laughs> like I said, stupid and deluded. Oh, you're just jealous. Jealous because you can't stand anybody else to be happy. Then why don't you ask Frank, who he's actually really planning to take away with him? But I'm warning you, don't come crying to me when you find out that I was right. And we'll be back in Coronation Street in half an hour. <laughs>